The objective of this talk is to predict the transport of uh, through a fractured porous medium of a tracer in a slightly compressible fluid under the action of uh, external pressure variations, such as the atmospheric pressure, actually. And the applications are many. Uh, one of them is the remediation of contaminated sites, or radon in buildings, breathing of caves, and also a very important item is the detection of underground nuclear explosions. So this has been recently published in uh, GRL, a summary of this, uh, of this talk. So let us look at the fractured porous medium. Everything is 3D, so you have a fra fractures here in color and the porous medium around. And uh, at the bottom, we assume that we have a solute source. And to make it simple, the, sol the concentration is equal to one. And there is no coarse flow. And at the top, we have, uh, at the ground surface here, we have a concentration which is equal to zero say the wind will uh, sweep the concentration, will clean the, the air, and we have, for the time being, a variation of a pressure which is sinusoidal. And the objective is to calculate the flow and the concentration fields as function of times. So the governing equation for flow, we assume here that the Reynolds number is small, and actually, it has been checked in the calculations that the Reynolds number is always small. We have, the, in the porous matrix, we have a porosity epsilon, a bulk permeability Km, and then we have a classical Darcy law, mass conservation of a slightly compressible fluid with a compressibility coefficient Cm, and we get this uh, classical Darcy law, the uh, mass conservation equation, and if if everything is constant, then we can write this equation under this form with the matrix pressure diffusivity. Now, in the fractures, it's about the same thing. We have an aperture B, a transmissivity sigma, and we assume a two-dimensional Darcy's law in the fracture plane. So this is given here. So we have this mass conservation here, and basically here, we have this transfer between the, uh, the fractures and the surrounding porous medium. It's local, of course. And then the transport, the, if I assume a passive tracer which is transported by the gas, and it will be, uh, the Picklin number has been checked here again, and the Picklin number is always small, so it's a purely diffusive process, even in the fractures mainly a diffusive process. So in the porous matrix, we have this classical equation. In the fracture, again, the same type of equation with a transfer term here between the fractures and the surrounding porous medium. And we need some constitutive equations, the permeability as a function of porosity. And then for the effective conductivity, we assume that we have Archie's law with an exponent of 1.4. So that's very classical. And the transmissivity here of the fractures, we assume that they are uh, given by this uh, Poiseuille-like uh, equation. And the diffusion, the dimensionless diffusion in fractures is simply uh, equal to the aperture of a fracture. So the boundary conditions, we assume this, so this is uh, general hypothesis, we assume that the uh, fluid flow and solute concentration are spatially periodic in a horizontal plane. And at the bottom here are, uh, and at the top are the uh, boundary conditions uh, I spoke about uh, previously. So all these conditions can be modified for instance, we can easily modify the spatially periodic boundary conditions here laterally. That's not a problem. We can also replace this condition on the pressure by uh, give, uh, giving a pressure history or whatever we have. 
And also I want to stress that uh, the, in the calculations that I'm going to show you today, we have a constant, uh, constant permeabilities, constant uh, aperture, constant radius of the fractures, but everything can be made uh, variable. So it depends essentially of what you have as input data, and then you can make more, more complex and possibly more realistic calculations for a given site. So the general simulation scheme goes as follow. Usually we like the finite volume method to discretize the equations. So actually the solute transport, the flow does not depend on the solute transport. So what we do is that we solve the, the flow field independently and then we have a series of output data and then we solve for the convection diffusion transport in a second, in a second step. What we do is we mesh the fraction network by an unstructured mesh by triangles, taking into account the intersections between the fractures. And uh, then when, once this is done, we can mesh the porous matrix in between the fractures by an unstructured tetrahedral mesh. And we have this time implicit finite, form, finite volume formulation. Here what we use is a triple control volume at the fractures, so we have a value of a concentration at the fractures and in the surrounding porous matrix. So the pressure and concentration I define are the nodes at the nodes of the grid. And the transport equations are integrated over control volumes around these nodes. And the physical properties are prescribed for each surface and volume element. Two points are uh, considered with special care. Numerical dispersion, this is a pain usually for, for this kind of problem. But we use a flux limiting scheme with a super B algorithm and it works quite well. And uh, there is also a problem uh, in uh, the, uh, the evaluation of the exchanges between why does it move by itself? Uh, I want to go back. Yeah. And uh, so it's, uh, if we don't take it, pay any attention to this point, then we tend to overestimate the transfer between the fractures and the matrix. So we have to take care of that. So the results, it's for an application to a specific site. Actually, it's a work in collaboration with the French Atomic Energy Commission. And they have a lab in the Alps. So it's basically a tunnel like this, which is about 150 meters long and which is about uh, 50 meters below the surface, uh, the surface of the ground. And actually, they were, it's quite a, a useful place because it, it has been the to, uh, more than 15 years of scientific research has been done on this specific site. So we know a lot about this uh, particular site. Some orders of magnitude now for this site. So the pressure here, that I, I, I said it already. The amplitude is about 10 millibars. Uh, the period is about one week. Zero flux at the bottom, as I said. Now the fracture density. The fracture density uh, is evaluated here by rho prime, which is the average number of intersections per fracture. And we chose, for most of the calculations, we chose a, a value of rho prime, which is equal to 2.3 which is exactly the percolation threshold. So see, if you generate a network at this, at this uh, density, then you will have some of the networks which percolate and some of them which will not percolate. The radius of the fractures are five, is five meters. The aperture is about 0.5 millimeter and the, uh, the permeability of the matrix 10 minus 16. And this set of parameters, it's the standard case. I forgot, I just realized this morning, that I forgot to give the porosity of a porous medium. It's one person here. It's a kind of granite. 
the, the rock here. So we, then we calculate for these values, we can calculate the macroscopic diffusion coefficient of the fractured porous medium. So this is this number. And I remind you of the uh, classical solution uh, of uh, uh, under a diffusion process given by this expression here. So it's a counter F function of, of time and Z, of course. Z is the vertical coordinate. So the pressure field, this is a cross section, a vertical cross section. The black lines that you see are the intersections of the fractures with this plane here. This is the vertical axis, uh, horizontal axis. And the phase shift, of course, it's one. So the phase sh is zero here when it's red. So it's very small in the region where the fractures are many and it's uh, larger when the fracture, far, far away from the fractures. And the same thing for damping. So damping one here, this coefficient means there is no damping. It's, uh, so it's red around the fractures and it's blue, the damping becomes important as here where the phase shift is important. So I want to illustrate the results by a small movie. Hopefully it will work. So you will see here, you will see a cross section, the same cross section as before, vertical coordinate, horizontal coordinate, and you will see the field, the concentration field according to this color code. Here, the pressure, and here, uh, the concentration average in a horizontal plane, so this is again the vertical coordinate, the concentration here, and you see two curves, the matrix, which is a green one, if I see well, the fractures, the blue one, and the dots, which are the classical diffusion equation in the, in the theory that I showed. So now let us try if the movie works or not. Okay, I answered that question to yesterday. Finish, possibly. Uh, yes, here. Finish. I did that yesterday, but apparently I have to do it again. Uh, cancel. Uh, may, may I go out, escape, and try to, to launch it here? Yeah. So you see here. The concentration is very interesting. The way it invades, it percolates, it finds a percolating path through the, porous, uh, through the porous matrix, thanks to the fractures. At the same time, you see the pressure fluctuations here. And what is the most interesting, this is this graph here, because you see, these are the lines, are the lines calculated in the simulations. And this is the concentration. And the dots, I repeat, is the classical diffusion equation in a steady state. And what you see is that the concentration far away, close to the ground surface here, is orders of magnitude larger than the concentration as it is predicted by the, the uh, classical diffusion equation, you see. And you see also fine effects here. When you see some, if you look with attention, I don't know if it, the image is good enough, but you see some, so to speak, some breathing of the concentration in the fraction network. So maybe we can stop here and go back to the, uh, to the talk. Yes. And next, okay, so this is a kind of a summary of what's happening. So you have time on the horizontal axis and various quantities on the vertical axis. So the first one is the mean normalized pressure in the fractures. So, and the, the, <coughs> the next, and then the mean pressure in the matrix, then the flux from the fractures to the matrix flux from matrix to fractures, 
and you can distinguish four periods, storage in the matrix, restitution to the fractures, and up and down uh, um, uh, periods, uh, times, in the fraction, for the flow in the fraction network. And the interplay between these different, uh, different uh, <coughs> phase shift, dumping, and, and up and down, this corresponds to the so-called ratcheting effect, which was introduced years ago by uh, Nielsen, and I'm going to, to show it a little bit later. So let us have a look to the standard case again for long time, so 50 days. You see, so vertical coordinate, horizontal coordinate in concentration field. 100 days, 100. So these are, say, pictures at a given time. And what you see that you have a double, a double evolution of the concentration field. You have an evolution around this percolation path here. And you have an evolution here. So I prepared the talk for 30 minutes, but it's written 10, no, no, it's 10.45. Ah, okay, well, that, that's a big mistake. Huh? So I just want to, to tell you just one result, because first thing, if you do it in a non-percolating network, then you have, you see a very strong influence of the non-percolating network yeah, here. And so we did a, a lot of, uh, I just want to, uh, to show you, you, you have very, uh, paradoxical results, for instance, if you increase the diffusion coefficient from this value to this value, then uh, what happens is that you decrease the output of the concentration. And this is verified by site experiments. So to, uh, we, we studied many things, but I want to stop here. I'm sorry for this, uh, for this problem. I checked that this morning. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Do <laughs> we time just for a quick question if there's anything from you? Yes, a concentrate It's of course important for budgeting What is the reason it was one Oh, it's just an order of magnitude. Actually, uh, uh, what we are doing, for instance, we have here real, uh, real pressure recordings, uh, and this is what we are going to do, what we are doing at the moment. So it's just an order of magnitude. And actually, we play with that, say, five kilopascals and uh, 50 kilopascals, and see the influence of this pressure amplitude on the, on the results. So it's just an order of magnitude. Any other question? No? Then thanks, Pierre. Thank again. you.